Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming and sometimes hair so if that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not going to see here on YouTube. Guys, I'm using a relatively cheapy new mic because my last microphone broke, but there's a new one coming so I'm sorry about the audio quality and about my voice, it's a little bit, I've got like this acid reflux condition thing going on at the moment so my throat's a little bit like all. Oh. Today I just kind of wanted to do my evening routine and a few of you guys like these videos where it's a little bit more relaxed. We do our routines together so if you're watching this in the morning in the US maybe save this for your evening routine. We'll do our routine together but today I'm going to do the truthful YouTuber tag. This is a very old tag and no one's tagged me in this tag. <laughs> but I came across um, this video by Mel Thompson who is the creator of this tag. How many times have I said tag? But I thought it might just kind of be a fun way to kind of catch up, talk about stuff. So yeah, I'm very truthful when it comes to everything, especially about the influencer industry and the you being a YouTuber. Um, so I thought we'd just be a little bit more truthful and go in with the truthful YouTuber tag. So before I start, I've just come out of the shower, I've cleansed, I've double cleansed. And now I'm just gonna re-quench my skin with the Claire's Daily Skin Hydrating Water. I'm nearly out of this, but I have got <laughs> A brand new one here. These last forever. I absolutely love them. I'm kind of just using this as um, a way to re-wet my skin after coming out the shower. The first question, I believe it gets like more truthful and kind of like more tea spill um, as you go through. But number one, have you ever received a product, tried it, didn't like it, and then decided not to review it? Yes, all the time. All the time, especially when brands um, send you stuff, this is gonna sound really ungrateful, but when a brand sends you stuff that, um, but they don't let you pick the products that you want to test from their range, like I'm grateful for receiving a gift, but I'm at the point now where um, I received a lot, I receive even a lot of gifts. So if you're a brand and you want me to try your skincare, you want the chance of it being on my channel, I kind of want to pick what products you send me, because otherwise the likelihood is I get them, I look at it, I'm never gonna use it, so I give it away. And it usually doesn't, to be very honest with you. Question number two is a product you use alone, but don't show or use online. Oh. Hmm. Before I do that, I'm gonna go on to my next um, step. I feel very dehydrated at the moment, so I'm gonna use two toners and an essence. This is the I'm From Rice toner. I've talked about this so many times, but it's very hydrating and nourishing for my skin. I'm going, getting, through the last of a bit of irritation. Um, so this is helping like with my skin tone as well, calming down redness. So yeah, products you use alone but don't show or use online. Deodorant, I think, is one that I use a lot of. That I, Where is my deodorant? I don't know, it's this Mitchum 48 hour one. But there are a lot of products that I think um, I probably do use but I don't show that often because either I film the video and it doesn't make it onto my channel because I'm like, well, that was boring. There's never a product that I wanna keep secret, you know, cause it's my job to kind of tell you guys about that. I guess one product I've been using, no, you guys know, you guys know everything that I use, everything that I'm trialing, but there may have been videos that just didn't make it so you never saw that I reviewed that product, if that makes sense. But yeah, I mean, other than my deodorant, I don't think there's a product that you guys don't see. Three, product you want but won't buy because you don't support the brand. Um, anything Drunk Elephant, I have to be honest. Anything Drunk Elephant, um, I just hate their customer service. I hate this stick up their ass that they have. They have this superiority complex that you can see when um, on their social media, the way they talk to customers, the way they talk to influencers. And they also have this strange cult following of people who will stick up for this brand like they're a famous singer and it's very, very odd. Um, yeah, they need to get off their high horse and realize that influencers Basically, it's their customers that made them who they are. Yeah, no, I don't support Drunk Elephant at all. Question number four, do you have any blocked words? So for those of you who may not know, on YouTube you can block words and any sentence that contains those blocked words will show up in your held for review section in the comments section um, when you go to reply. I have the usual, I have um, the C word <laughs> blocked. Um, I do have words like gay and all the derogatory terms for that, I have racist terms as well. Not because of me, if you look through my comments, you'll see that I let quite a lot of comments bashing me through because it doesn't bother me. And I usually let the rest of the people in the comments have a go at them for me. <laughs> but it's more the fact that um, you'll get these random people commenting on my subscribers' comments 
calling them really horrible names, racist names, and it just doesn't sit well with me. I've also got a few YouTubers names blocked um, because the, I'm not going to say the names, but the, the comments that usually come along with that are insulting these YouTubers and um, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go in with an essence. This is <laughs> the SK2, what is this? SK2 Facial Treatment Essence. This is a really nice essence, but you do not need the SK2 essence for a good essence. There's so many good dupes, like the Misha one, the Secret Key one, but um, YesStyle gave me some money to shop on their website, so I had to get this back. Do you delete comments? If so, why? Yes, I do. I delete comments that um, spread misinformation. I delete, as I mentioned, any insults, arguments, um, derogatory, racist, homophobic, sexist slang um, in my comments. Um, I delete spam comments. I delete the comments where people are like, hey, check out my channel. If you're a new up and coming YouTuber, it's fine to go onto someone's video and be like, hey, love this video, a bit of feedback. Also, would you mind checking out my channel? This is what I do. Great, do it. But don't just go on somebody's channel and be like, hey, check out my videos. That's not how you promote yourself. <laughs> Number six, do you block people? Yes, all the time. I think people underestimate the power of just blocking someone online. Like, I'm not on here. Like, a lot of people are like, YouTubers are brands, they're their own brands. I'm not on here to take shit from anyone. Like, if you disagree with me, that's absolutely fine. Um, I love feedback, I love constructive feedback, but I don't like people who insult for no reason. I always think if you have something to say to a creator, say it in their comments so they can get that feedback, but I block people who just are plain insulting. I let insults through, <laughs> it really doesn't bother me. I'm in my 30s, like it doesn't bother me, these little kids online who like to bitch about you on the Reddit forums or in your comment section, it doesn't bother me. What does bother me is just annoying spam insults. It's like, that's when it gets annoying and be clever with your insults. We can go back and forth and if you're not being clever with your insults, you're gonna lose against me. <laughs> Number seven, have you ever lied about a product to stay on good terms with the brand? No. Absolutely not, and that's me being 100% honest. I um, don't care <laughs> what brands think of me or what brands, um, I just, I, yeah, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. I think brands actually really appreciate honest feedback. I think Glow Recipe, for example, I had a chat with them the other day, told them why I don't like one of their products, and they were like, fine, thanks for the feedback kind of thing. Same with Kiehl's. I insult Kiehl's all the time, but they are so nice to me. They always email me with other suggestions, um, products I might like in place of the ones I insulted. Brand, I feel like brands nowadays really do appreciate um, honest feedback. I don't think you have to, I don't think, there's like a million brands out there nowadays. It doesn't matter if a couple don't like you, you know. Before the next question, I'm gonna show you the serum I've been using. This is the Cosrx AC Collection Blemish Splot, Splot, Spot Clearing Serum. Um, it's been really helped just soothe my skin, um, take down any redness and inflammation, um, stop some spots in their tracks. I actually just really use the tiniest bit, like half, half a pipette. Question number eight, have you ever initially liked a product when you reviewed it and then changed your mind but didn't let your audience know. There are loads of products that um, I did like and now I don't. Um, I'm actually making a series about it. I posted a video the other day because you, you get accused of lying when that video were like, the videos were years apart. Skin changes, our skin has to change, so our products has to change. Um, brands reformulate their products, so the products might not be as good as the one that you used ages ago. You know, it does change but um, I get round to commenting and if you go back on my older videos, you'll see like new comments from me, pinned comments saying, I no longer like this or don't do this, you know? But there are gonna be products that I've talked about before that I just don't use anymore. Um, like Lush products, for example. But you know, I, I don't, I can't remember them all and go back and change it. But but that's why if, if you have a question, just leave a comment and I usually answer. Number nine, influencer you don't trust. Um, any of those, that five minute crafts conglomerate, um, obviously I, I talk about them all the time. They have the worst intentions of literally just creating fake content and fake hacks and um, fake results. Um, everything from their cooking to their skincare to their DIY crafts, it's, it's never what, um, the outcome is never real, if that makes sense. And you can tell they're making like a shit ton of money as well from these videos. I'm trying to think of like a name. No, I guess just those, like, I don't know. They're sketchy, they're weird. Influencer I trust the most. Um, 
There's a few. I think um, Leah Yu, because she's just very honest and you know she researches like a ton, like a ton into all the products that she uses. She works with um, so many different types of people within the industry as well. She has very good knowledge about everything. She is an influencer, but Caroline Hirons as well. I love how just um, to the point she is. A lot of people call her blunt. Um, I don't think she's blunt. I just think she's to the point and no bullshit and this is the fact deal with it or not kind of thing. And that's what makes me trust someone is that when they don't skirt around an issue. So when it comes to skincare reviews as well, I love listening to what she has to say about stuff. She is my go-to for um, like Western beauty, if that makes sense. But then obviously the people like Lab Muffin Beauty Science as well, one of my favorite blogs, one of my favorite creators on here, um, Chemistry PhD. Her posts as well are very to the point, science backed, and she never has a biased opinion. And she's never out to prove her point, if that makes sense. Um, if I don't know who to trust, like surrounding a certain thing, a topic, um, I'll see if, Lab, if Michelle from Lab Muffin said anything about it. Next product, I'm gonna do another serum. This is the Time Revolution Artemisia Ample. Um, by Misha. Um, again, this is just something that's soothing and calming and moisturizing for my skin. Secret tips or product application you don't show well on camera. No, I think I show off more on camera. <laughs> this is how I apply my products all the time, like this. And I'll do some tapping. Um, if I'm not on camera, it's usually a lot quicker than this and like down my neck and down here. And that's another thing as well. I guess it's more about what I don't do on camera is I don't do a lot of neck stuff and in the beard stuff and chest stuff because it doesn't look nice on camera and it kind of takes a lot of time. So I usually cut that out like I'm going to now. But then often sometimes I'll just rush through the routine. I'll just kind of like do this, like I'll put the product in my hand, do that, then put it all over my face and then go to bed kind of thing. It really depends. But no, I don't know if there's any kind of like se secret application you can do um, with skincare. Let me know if you have anything that you do. Number 12, we've got a few more to go. Have you ever showed one product but were actually using another? Yes, um, I've done it one time. So because when I used to use the Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid and Niacin, my serum a lot, they both look the same. They got the same lids, they got the same droppers. So if I forgot to film footage of me using a Niacin, my serum, if I had that footage of me using the hyaluronic acid, I would use it in place because it looks exactly the same. But that was very, very rare. I think I did it like twice because I didn't have time to, um, it was when I worked full time, I didn't have time to re-record footage. Um, what else did I do? I, I use old footage a lot. So I, I don't lie about the product, but for example, because like the way things work and how I'm filming stuff, if I'm talking about exfoliators, but I've already exfoliated three times that week, I don't want to exfoliate again on camera. Um, just to show me using an exfoliator. So I'll use a footage of me using an exfoliator from another video or footage that I've not used before. I think people could tell you're too clever. Do you know what I mean? Like if I showed you this and then was using another serum, you'd be like, that's a completely different color and not the same texture. Number 13, we have three more after this. So number 13 is, have you ever not disclosed a sponsorship? No, because that is illegal here in the UK. You could get fined, it's against the law, it's, against the law. <laughs> and no, to be honest, I've not really done a whole load of sponsorships anyway. Um, just cause, I don't know. But yeah, I don't wanna do prison. I won't do very well in prison. So the next step I'm gonna do is a very lightweight sleeping mask. Um, my skin's been destroyed recently by that reaction I had. So I'm trying to get some brightness back into it. So I'm gonna be using the Yuja Niacin Brightening Sleeping Mask by Sun By Me. And its main ingredient is the citrus fruit extract. Um, so this is a fruit that's somewhere between lemons and limes and has like a great grape fruity kind of um, taste and smell to it. I'm fine with things like lemon juice if it's formulated into a product, not squeezed out of a lemon and put straight on your skin because it's, you know, formulated to be in there. I'm not so okay with citrus oils, but I've been using this for the last couple of nights and my skin seems to be fine. It does seem to be doing a nice job of um, um, brightening my skin tone. So, you know, when it's my job to review stuff. I'm gonna try some stuff that I maybe don't really want to review. <laughs> and see if it does a good job. It does just smell like orange, which is unsettling, I must admit. But it seems to be doing some good for my skin. I was also asked to review this a lot. So um, this is for you guys. <laughs> Number 14, have you ever had a bad interaction with a brand? Um, Not a bad interaction, but when I first started YouTube and one of my first sponsorships was Braun. Um, they're like a men's shaving company. Um, and I think because I was on my own, like I have management now who could deal with stuff like this, but because I was on my own, they kind of took the piss and they didn't pay me for about three months. Um, so I had to kind of 
I called them out on Twitter. I was like, hey, you've not paid me. And then they instantly paid me. But no, as far as like bad kind of interactions, no, not really, nothing nothing terrible. Number 15, have you ever bandwagoned with other people's thoughts on a particular product? Um, I haven't bandwagoned. I definitely looked into people's thoughts on stuff. For example, when I heard Drunk Elephant had gone crazy at some influencers online. I definitely looked into that. I thought, right, I don't like this brand anymore either. Like, what the fuck kind of thing. Um, when I started YouTube, I definitely kind of like listened to what other skincare YouTubers said online before doing my own research. But no, I've never not liked something or pretended to like something just because other people do. Again, I'm like too old for that. Okay, so the last product I'm going to use is this Sunday Riley Ice Ceramide Moisturizing Cream. Um, again, my skin is, um, was freaking out and this is just helping repair that. This is pricey, this was sent to me. Um, it's not a, pro oh God, it's not a product I'll be buying after. The Inculus Do Really Nice Affordable Ceramide, Ceramide Night Mask, um, which I would recommend because the only good thing about this is it's ceramides, to be honest. Um, and CeraVe, of course, are known for always having ceramide-enriched skincare. So you definitely don't need to fork out this type of money. And I won't be either when this runs out. Number 16, things other creators do that get on your nerves. Um, not disclosing sponsorship is a huge one. Um, only because it's such like a, um, I feel like it's more American creators though that do this. I'm pretty sure the laws are the same as far as disclosing sponsorships in America, but for some reason, especially the male, um, like men's lifestyle creators never seem to disclose their sponsorships and it drives me crazy. It makes me not trust them as well. Cause it's like, why are you keeping that secret? Are you embarrassed that you're working with the brand? Is there something shady going on with that brand? Do you know what I mean? Like why? Why are you not telling people that this is a sponsored post? It's very, very odd to me. But that's about it really. There's not a whole lot that drives me crazy. I don't watch um, a lot of YouTube, like typical influencers, dog hair up my nose, to notice anything that's going to drive me crazy. I always say this, but I watch like true crime um, and like um, horror on YouTube. And I've really got into people building miniature houses. <laughs> I don't know what it is, and scenery. Um, there's some really good channels out there. Oh, I also don't like it when um, people are bitchy about other creators on their videos. I find it really like, um, it says more about the creator than it does the person they're reacting to, if that makes sense. Right, so I have laminated eyebrows, so I have got to brush them up every single night. They look kind of ridiculous, but swapped for an oil. I keep forgetting I need to put oil on them. Um, but yeah, you need to brush your laminated brows up every night and oil them so that they don't go dry and horrible, but also they hold their straight shape. So yeah, they look a little bit crazy. You wake up looking even crazier. And then finally to finish off, I am going to use this Milk Makeup uh, Melatonin Overnight Lip Mask. I mentioned this is one of my favorites. Um, quite a few videos, but it's just nice. It's just a nice lip balm. Doesn't get stuck to stuff. Doesn't feel gloopy and thick and messy and unbreathable. But yeah, maybe you can have a go at answering the questions yourself. I'll put all the questions in the description box down below, as well as a link to Mel Thompson's channel. Who came up with this tag? So thank you for joining me. But that is it from me now, guys. I will see you next time.